Home sales in May jumped a remarkable 44.3% month to month. That, according to the National Association of Realtors, that is the largest monthly jump on record since they began tracking this in 2001 and blew out all expectations of a jump of about 15%. Sales had fallen about 22% in April. Sales, though, in May still down 5.1% year over year. Now, pending sales represent signed contracts, that is, people out shopping during the month of May, and that's when mortgage rates started coming down as well. They started the month around 3.2 percent. By the start of June, they were down below 3 percent. Now, the problem here, though, is the supply of homes for sale, still down 19 percent annually, and new home construction is not ramping enough and up enough. But we did see new home sales jump as well. Not quite the 44 percent, but this is really a remarkable number. Hello, everybody, again. I hope you're doing well. I hope this whole uh, staying at home orders treated you well, and we're already in different phases in different parts of the country and going back to normal, but there's a spike of this whole COVID situation, so let's be careful. Okay, uh, so in having conversations with clients and potential clients and friends and family members, the number one question now I'm getting is, is the market gonna crash? Uh, are values going to go down? Uh, I heard I should wait to buy because the, the values are gonna drop in the near future, no later than December. Well, first we can't predict the future, right? And it doesn't seem like it, but here's the reasoning behind it, right? So, so prior to COVID, we were in a shortage of inventory, which means uh, every time a property hit the market for sale, there were you know, two, three, four, five buyers available for that one property. So it's like a four or five buyer ratio to one property. And, and so then buyers find themselves competing for one property and they overbid each other and then values continue to go up because it sells at above asking price. That's the trend, that's how values increase based on demand. Okay, so, but when the COVID situation took effect, what ended up happening is that People who were looking to sell in springtime decided to hold off because they didn't want to take a chance of having people over. People that were already on the market for sale decided to take the property off the market because they didn't want to take a chance on being at risk and having people over. So it created a shorter, tighter inventory. So that means now there's the same amount of buyers for less properties available. However, the government want to stimulate the purchase of homes because it's a big purchase item and it's being, it brings a lot of revenue uh, from taxes, you know, sales tax, property tax, uh, income tax from all the people involved in the transaction. And so then they lower the interest rate. And in lowering the interest rate, the interest rate it created a bigger demand. So now we have 10, 12, 15 buyers for every one property. So everybody's overbidding each other even more aggressively, so much so that the joke now I say is that housing now, homes are now the new, the new toilet paper because any home that hits the market flies off the shelves quick. There's some exceptions to that, right? If you are unexpected, I'm sorry, if you're a, a, a seller that has uh, uh, expectations misplaced and you overprice the property, then the property's gonna sit in the market and not gonna sell especially if it's not attractive or if it's not upgraded, if it's not in the right location and things like that. All those factors do help, but if it's priced right. If it's not priced right, then it's not gonna sell, period. Uh, or it's gonna end up getting offers that are lower than the price and either the sell takes out for, or not. Uh, then eventually most of those homes can then end up expiring and not selling, or they sell at fair market value. Okay, so, so then what's gonna happen after COVID? So we don't know. First, we're, we're starting to get a, a, a spike on the, this whole COVID situation. Hopefully you, the economy won't have to be shut down again. Stay at home orders. Hopefully it doesn't take place again. We don't know what's gonna happen with that. What we can predict, what is the economists are saying, what uh, the uh, Department of Real Estate head economist, you know, uh, is a, a go-to person, not only for our industry, but also for the government. Um, there, it's likely that they're going to continue to keep the interest rates at a very uh, low rate to continue to entice and, uh, and entice the economy to keep moving. So 
And so then if that happens, then I don't foresee that the market's gonna crash in any way. Now, nobody can predict the future. We didn't predict COVID, we didn't predict a lot of these things. And so uh, it's not like we were in 2008 where the whole lending industry was uh, creating a bubble pressure, a pressure of the bubble that burst eventually. That's not the case here. So then right now, I think it's important if you're gonna buy, right now it's, it's great because you could get less than three and a half percent, in some instances, three percent to make a purchase if you're a fully qualified buyer. Um, uh, and so then right now it's really affordable to be able to make a purchase. If you're gonna sell, now is the time to sell too because the, the, the properties are selling aggressively fast and above asking price in most cases, and it allows you to net more money. But you have to work with the right agent, right? If you're a buyer, work with the right agent. If you're a seller, work with the right agent and put things in motion. Somebody has experience in negotiating and making things work and make things happen. I hope you liked the video. Feel free to uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, all the good stuff with YouTube and uh, it helps the channel grow and algorithms. I don't know how that works, that just know it helps. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, uh, call me anytime. Thank you, talk soon.